everyone myself ruja abumare i am pursuing my masters in sanjiti institute of orthopedic and rehabilitation in college of physiotherapy in cbrs so uh, today's topic is risk factors of the cardiovascular diseases so today's uh, topic is risk factors of cardiovascular diseases why it is important so we should know before giving any exercise any treatment or before giving any exercise we should know as a physiotherapist we should know the what are the risk factors of that patient what we should give what we should not give it is like a pre-assessment or pre-test of that uh, pre-test of that patient so then next so introduction Obtaining and understanding a medical history is a very important part of pretest evaluation. So, careful evaluation prior to the exercise testing or exercise participation is important. There are risks associated with physical activity. So, before giving any exercise, we should know the medical. What is medical history? Uh, what is um, pretest evaluation? So on the basis of that, we will design the exercise protocol for that patient. So although there is a risk of acute musculoskeletal injury during the exercise, so we should know that. Then the major concern is increased the risk of sudden cardiac death and myocardial infraction that is sometimes associated with the vigorous physical exertion. So generally, in currently we have seen so many gym going per people uh, had a cardiac arrest or sudden cardiac uh, uh, arrest or uh, sudden cardiac death because of the cardiac arrest so because they didn't uh, check the risk factors or they didn't check their uh, risk uh, risk of doing uh, some exercises so it is essential to identify individuals at an increased risk for adverse exercise related events. So then next, there are two types of risk factors. Some are modifiable means we can change. Some are non-modifiable. That is modifiable, non-modifiable. Modifiable are we can change, non-modifiable that we cannot change that risk factors. So, modifiable risk factors are smoking, diabetes, high blood pressure, obesity, nutrition, physical inactivity, high cholesterol, stress and depression. So, why these factors are modifiable risk factors? Because we can change these risk factors. Example, the smoking. We can say that persons have to quit smoking. That is a modification of that um, risk factor. Diabetes, we can give the treatment, we can uh, prescribe or like we can uh, change, like we can huh. we can uh, reduce the blood pressure, we can uh, in increase the physical activity or increase the physical activity or we can make active to the patient to reduce the obesity. So these are the modifiable risk factors. Then non-modifiable risk factors are like age, sex, family history, and genetic factors. We cannot change the age of that person. We cannot change gender. We can. Uh, there are the family histories of that patient. Some patients, uh, relatives had a um, myocardial infection or cardiovascular disease. So it can transfer to them also. There are some genetic factors also like diabetes, hypertension, so asthma. So all these the factors can transfer to the people like um, next generation. So these are the non-modifiable. That means not changing these factors. We cannot change that risk factors. Okay. So we will see in details all the risk factors. There are some eight uh, primary risk factors like age family history, hypertension, dyslipidemia, cigarette smoking, sedentary lifestyle, obesity, and pre-diabetes, and also diabetes also. And uh, 
we will include in this also there is a mental health can be the risk factor of for some people so first is age so oh, age is a positive risk factor for if the female is greater than or equal to 45 years old sorry Five. Age is a risk factor for if the man is increased uh, greater than or equal to 45 years old and the woman is greater than or equal to 55 years old. Okay. So these are the risk factors and uh, age is a non-modifiable risk factor. You cannot change the age of the person. So then family history. So, in family history, there was a myocardial infraction, coronary revascularization, or sudden death in the family, a father, first degree male relative that are less than 55 years old, or mother, a first degree female relative is less than 65 years old, can be, can have um risk very high chances to get um cardiovascular diseases so genetics are the good predictable uh, predictors of what disease a person may be risk for so where the genetics are good predictor so if the patient's relatives like person relatives like mother or father had the diabetes or hypertension or cardiovascular diseases that can transfer that mostly will transfer the that uh, another generation or so we know what can happen so what we can predict which diseases can a person may be risk for so that person will uh, reduce the that risk factors like uh, if the uh, the patient or uh, relatives the person relatives has a high blood pressure so he can be more active or more he can other risk factors like obesity or uh, smoking he can uh, like uh, he try to not do smoking so it can reduce the chances of high blood pressure so it can also reduce uh, cardiovascular diseases so these are the like it's like a chain if you change one factor, this will reduce the risk of another disease, or this will reduce of bigger, uh, reduce the risk of bigger disease. So it is very important to start with the smaller, smaller, smaller things. So third is the dyslipidemia. Dyslipidemia means it is a um, in, uh, increased uh, low density lipoprotein. That means uh, bad cholesterol. And high density lipoproteins, it means good cholesterol. So, uh, is a positive risk factor if the low density lipoprotein cholesterol, that means bad cholesterol, is greater than or equal to 30 mg per dl, or a high density cholesterol lipoprotein cholesterol is less than or equal to 40 mg uh, per deciliter. That is a good cholesterol. So, if the uh, hmm. so if the bad cholesterol is increased and good cholesterol is reduced, so it is a getting uh, more chances of getting uh, cardiovascular diseases of that person. It is a um, good. Uh, it is a risk very. Uh, It can be the risk factor for that patient, for that person. So, or the total cholesterol is greater than or equal to 200 mg per day DL. So, this is also a risk factor for that person. And the negative risk factor means high density lipoprotein cholesterol, that is a good cholesterol, is greater than or equal to 60 mg per DL. If the high density lipoprotein is 
greater. High density uh, lipoprotein, good cholesterol is greater than 60 mg per dl. It's a good thing. So then it is a negative risk factor. Okay. Then fourth is a hypertension. So hypertension is a high, uh, increase the blood pressure. So it is a positive risk factor for you if the systolic BP. In blood pressure, there is a two BP like blood pressure. So the so first is systolic and second like lower is diastolic blood pressure. So the upper, upper cerebral. So systolic blood pressure is greater than or equal to 140 mmHg or diastolic blood pressure is uh, greater than or equal to 90 mmHg. Then uh, it is a chance. Uh, these, it is calculated as a high potential, high blood pressure. So ideal blood pressure is below 120 mmHg for the systolic and below uh, 80 mmHg for diastolic. So classification are low, normal, hypertension, high stage 1 hypertension, stage 2 hypertension. There are 5 classifications. So low is a, if the systolic BP is less than 90 and uh, diastolic BP is less than 60. So it it will calculate as it is a low uh, BP. Then normal range is 120. Uh, if the systolic blood pressure is less than 120 and diastolic blood pressure is less than 80. So it will be the normal blood pressure. Then prehypertension. Prehypertension means the systolic BP blood pressure range is 120 to 139 or uh, diastolic BP range is 80 to 89. Then it will be the prehypertensive range of the uh, person. So then is a high, high in high blood pressure, there is stage one and stage two. Stage one hypertension is 140 to 159. Systolic blood pressure and diastolic blood pressure is 90 to 99. Then stage two hypertension is, if the systolic blood pressure is greater than or equal to 160 and diastolic blood pressure is greater than or equal to 100. So these are the chart, these are the classification of the hypertension. Then, so, uh, hmm. so why blood uh, hypertension or increased blood pressure causes the increase the uh, risk of cardiovascular disease? Because if the high blood pressure increases the damage to the arteries, then that damaged arteries, uh, there is a fatty deposition occurs. Then they narrowed the vessel walls, then reduced blood flow to the heart or body. So, because of that, increased blood pressure. So, it is it is like cycle. So, if increased blood pressure, then increase the risk of cardiovascular disease. Hmm. Then, cigarette smoking. So, why the cigarette smoking is the risk factor? Though because, because of smoking, there is chemical released in the blood that make your blood sticky. So because of that thing, uh, there is a low density lipoprotein that is uh, bad cholesterol increased that blood. So it and also cigarette smoking speed up the heart rate, increase the heart rate. So then uh, it uh, the heart has to work harder it makes the heart to work harder and also uh, the cig cigarette smoking reduce the good cholesterol and increase the bad cholesterol in the body in the blood so that's why increase the blood pressure and the uh, smoker in a smoker person, there is a two to four uh, times more risk than non-smoker person. It is a uh, of getting cardiovascular diseases. So cigarette smoking is a positive factor for you. If uh, you are a current cigarette smoker or you quit in the past six months or you live with a smoker. Okay. And also, the chewing tobacco is considered smoking. 
and therefore a positive risk factor. And cigarette smoking is a modifiable risk factor. You can try to, to quit smoking of that person. So because of it is a modifiable risk factor. Then sedentary lifestyle means physical inactivity. So it is a positive risk factor for you if you are not participating in any uh, regular exercise program or if you are not meeting a minimal recommendation of the exercise uh, accumulating 30 or more minutes of moderate physical activity on at least three days per week for three months. So according to ACSM recommendations, 60% should do 60 minutes workout, 60 minutes uh, workout, workout or any physical activity in uh, three days per week. If the goal is a weight loss, if the patient is obese and the goal is weight loss, so he should do 60 minutes, three days per week physical activity. Then obesity. So obesity is a positive risk factor. It is a positive risk factor for if your BMI is greater than or equal to 30 kilogram per meter square. Or if you are man, West girth is, West girth is greater than 102 centimeter. Or your waist hip ratio is greater than or equal to 95. So uh, in obesity, there are so many uh, there are so many units like BMI, waist uh, hip ratio, or the fat uh, caliper method also to check the obesity so for but we generally use the bmi method body mass index method so if you are a woman your best girth is greater than 88 centimeter that is 35 inch or your waist hip ratio is greater than equal to 86 so it 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 is considered as a obese individual so and according to bmi body mass index men the underweight is uh, less than uh, 18.5 healthy weight is 18.5 to 24.9 then overweight is 25 to 29.9 and obese is greater than 30 so in obese also there are first second third class like obese for like obese one obese two obese three like but uh, we will generally see the obese so then body mass index the underweight is less than 18.5 then healthy weight is 18.5 to 24.9 then overweight is 25 to 29 and obese is greater than 30 okay then pre-diabetes uh, is a primary risk factor for you if uh, Fasting blood glucose level is greater than or equal to 100 mg per year and less than or equal to 126 mg per year. So greater than 126 mg per year is a classified as a diabetes. Okay. So why the diabetes, like increased glucose level in the body or the diabetes has a uh, increased risk of cardiovascular diseases? So, if the increased blood glucose level in the blood, then increase the fatty buildup, then narrow the blood vessel walls, then reduce the blood flow. So, increase the heart pain, pumping. So, increase the blood glucose level, also increase the incidence of high BP, high blood pressure. We have seen before that like fatty deposit, fatty buildup, then narrow the blood pressure. So, in, reduce the blood flow. So, increase blood pressure. So, that is, that's like, increase the blood glucose level. Because of that, increase the incident of high blood pressure plus obesity plus high cholesterol. Then, increase the risk of high cholesterol. Means, 
the in diabetes there is an increase of blood pressure also it chances increase the blood uh, chances of increase the blood pressure also increase the obesity also because in diabetes people or mostly in diabetes not in pre diabetes in diabetes people there is a mm, there is a change in metabolism there is a defect in slight defect in metabolism so because of that obesity increases or and also high cholesterol increases like bad cholesterol increases then nine is a mental health generally in some people there is a mental health is also a risk factor for the uh, cardiovascular diseases because stress anxiety and depression and stress because of due to stress anxiety and depression hr heart rate can become irregular like some people we have seen some people like like oh it um, like uh, palpitation over and all so heart rate can become irregular because of stress so due to this blood pressure can increases then in these uh, like those people who take so much stress or anxiety so in this there is a fat cell convert into cholesterol that is bad cholesterol due to all these factors cardiovascular disease risk increases okay thank you